great stuff. Okay, I'm going to go. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the IET's London Young Professionals Network's first ever webinar. I'm Lakshan Subentharan, and I'm the chair of the London Young Professionals Network. And it's great to see a large number of you tuning in, as it shows that you're all eager and keen to understand how our network can help smash your career goals, which is exactly what we love to see. Now, we're hoping that this would be the first of many webinars to come, as well as us continuing to run our future live events, that is our in-person events at the IET's London headquarter in Savoy Place once the COVID-19 pandemic has come to an end. Now, we've decided to run this webinar to enlighten you on how the London Young Professionals Network can help you smash your career goals through the various events that we've planned throughout the year. Now, we want to try and provide you with as many opportunities as we can in order for you to develop new skills or even refine your existing skills so that you can take them away and apply them in your professional setting, which will hopefully, end, which will hopefully allow you to smash those career goals. So before we make a start, I'm going to run through how this webinar is going to be structured. So if we go on to the next slide, I will shortly hand you over to Minil, who is our vice chair, who will be going into a bit of detail on who the London Young Professional Network is and what our aims and our goals are. Uh, we will then introduce ourselves as a committee so you can see who sits within the London Young Professionals Network Committee. And hopefully you'll be able to see that we're just ordinary people that you can hopefully relate to. Uh, we will then go through the typical events that we run throughout the year. Now, that's not to say that the events that we're going to go through in this webinar are uh, the only events that we run. We are aiming to run a huge variety of events in the future, but hopefully the events that we run in this, the events that we explain in this webinar will give you a flavor, feel of the type of events that we run, as well as how these uh, events um, will, will benefit you in the future and also smash your career goals. Once we've completed running through the events, I'll hand you over to Ramel, who's our social media coordinator. And Ramel will run through our social media platforms where you can find us on and keep up to date with our upcoming events and also see some of the interesting STEM related content that gets posted. And then finally, we'll finish things off with, um, with finish things off with what you would like us to see run in the future. Um, so towards the end, we'll read out a few of the uh, events which you think might benefit you in the future, and we'll try our best to run these events in the future, provided there's a, a large demand for them, uh, and also finish things off with um, a Q and A. So that's the structure of the webinar. Now, before we get into the main content of the webinar, um, let's start off with an icebreaker. So in, I believe it's in the Q&A section or in the chat of the webinar, we want you to tell us what, how you've been keeping yourselves occupied during the London lockdown. Have you taken up any new hobbies or interests? Um, while we're waiting for you to type away, um, I'm just going to share what I've been up to. I've been going on the Open University website and enrolling onto their few courses. Um, something which I strongly, strongly recommend everyone to do if you've got spare time, because you could do this in your own time, at your own pace, and at the end of the course, uh, you receive a certificate of completion, and they typically last around 10 to 20 hours to um, to complete. I've also started to play a lot of Call of Duty Warzone. Now I'm not a gamer by any stretch, but my goodness me, I feel like I've got a tiny addiction to Call of Duty Warzone. Uh, before we read on to, I, I can see quite a lot of uh, comments being uh, entered, which is good. But before we read a few out, I'm going to pick on one of our committee members to see what they've been up to. So I'm going to pick. Uh, pick on Sam, who's our uh, 
Sam's our liaison officer. What have you been up to, Sam? Oh, thanks very much. I've been actually exploring the fridge every 10 minutes. <laughs> I do like a good snack. <laughs> and nice. also, I've been watching a lot of um, salsa videos. I'm trying to get into salsa, you know. Oh, nice. Yeah, so I've just been keeping it, you know, pretty relaxed, really, and just enjoying oh, the man, time. I would love to see your salsa moves. Oh, this. man, I'm, I'm really good at it. We, <laughs> we might have to have another webinar about that. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's good to hear. So I'm going to just read a few comments. So uh, we have um, CJ Nagy. Keep healthy and keep on learning. We've got Jason, uh, who is cooking. Uh, Camilla is learning a Japanese. Sarah S is playing video games. I hope you're playing that Warzone. It's it's oh my goodness me, so good. We've got uh, Erica uh, started running again and plus lots of cooking. I've started running as well. Um, Dan West is trying to bake sourdough and proven to be a nightmare. Uh, Merlin is doing yoga and skipping. Uh, and we've got Rob, who online courses as well, machine learning on Coursera and Warzone. Yes, that's it. So that is the icebreaker. Now let's get cracking with the webinar. Now I'm going to hand you over to Minil, as I mentioned, is our vice chair. And Minil's going to run through who we are as a local network uh, and what we do uh, and our aims and our goals. So over to you, Minil. So hi guys, um, we are the IET Young Professionals. We're a collective group of individuals aged from the ages of 18 all the way to 35. Whether you're an apprentice, you're in college, you're, uni uh, you're an undergraduate, postgraduate, or you have years of experience um, within industry. So we're here to support each other and progress our careers together in with the support of the Institute of Engineering and Technology. So our goal as a collective group is not only to support each other with our career progression, but also to inspire, inform the global community about the recent innovations within engineering and the technology field. So here we've got a couple of pictures of what we've been able to get up to during our um, time as part of the committee. And now, um, without further ado, I will show you the um, infrastructure of our London Committee Network. So as you, go, as you guys know, um, Lakshan is the chair and I am the vice chair. Um, we also have on our team, we have Elodie, uh, Ramel, uh, Lucci, Samuel, Jason and Shaheem, who will now all introduce themselves one by one. So over to you, Lak. Thank you very much, Minul. So uh, it's, it's me, Lakshan. Believe it or not, in that image, it is actually me. And that's how I will look like once I've had a shave and I had a haircut once lockdown's over. Uh, as Minul and myself mentioned, I'm, I'm the chair of the London Young Professionals Network. And I like to think of myself as just an ordinary person. Um, I do like hiking. I love hiking, actually. And I've hiked up quite a few mountains since I got into hiking back in 2017. Uh, I do like to challenge my uh, fitness and take on quite a few fitness challenges. So, for example, I took on a eight week white collar boxing training and then at the end had a fight at the end of it. Uh, please don't ask me the, the result, what the result was of that fight because it was slightly embarrassing what happened. Um, I do love my sport as well. So if anyone is entering a pub quiz and they want someone in their team with some good sports knowledge, you know, holler at me, give me a shout more than happy to be part of your pub quiz team and i love playing squash so if anyone fancies a game of squash or they want to challenge me to a game of squash bring it on so that's me lakshan i'm going to hand it back over to minnow to uh give her give give herself an introduction over to you Minul. thanks lakshan so as you guys know i am the vice chair of the london Fresh young professional network I am a material scientist and engineer uh, by background. At the moment, I'm doing an engineering doctorate um, on improving the efficiencies of gas turbine engines with the National Physical Laboratory and the University of Surrey. Outside of working and volunteering, um, I am a big advocacy for diversity and inclusion and also 
um, inspiring the younger generation into STEM. As you can see, one of my pictures, I like to play with a bit of liquid nitrogen and wow the kids um, with it. And I've also liked to go out and about and socialize. Um, I also like to keep fit through boxing, yoga, and running recently. I've been trying to raise some money uh, for uh, a charity as well. And um, I'm also a startup co-founder um, trying to tackle lab plastic waste. I'm trying to incorporate, um, I love incorporating engineering and entrepreneurship together as well. So yeah, that's a short summary of who I am and now I'm gonna pass it over to Elodie. Thank you, Mino. Hi, everybody. Um, I joined the IET for its Quality Edge Talks and the Young Professionals Group because um, we showcase uh, the career options available in engineering. Outside of my niche market, uh, no other institutions um, than the IET seem to organize public talks with leading industry experts. Um, I work as a language consultant and I had the opportunity to work with Google, Apple, Ocado Technology to adapt their product for Europe. Uh, singing has been a big part of my life. Um, I took part in local and national competitions. It's a real passion. Uh, the place where I always go back to is Montreux in Switzerland. You can see some pictures here, actually. Um, I love um, Montreux in Switzerland uh, for the lake, the mountain views, and the snow in winter because um, I love skiing. During lockdown, I attended several streamed events, spoke to friends that I can't see and to family online. I'm also homeschooling uh, my nephews, 10 and 14, on Google Meet. Uh, they're very engaged and uh, they seem to love um, uh, homeschooling um, with me over um, uh, Google Meet. Over to you, Oluchi. Hi, um, my name is Aluchi and I'm the treasurer for the London Young Professional Committee. Um, I am a 31-year-old engineer I'm from, and I'm originally from Nigeria. Um, I came to the UK about eight years ago to pursue a master's degree in, in renewable energy and clean technology. And now I work as a real automation engineer for Siemens Mobility Limited. I've been doing that for the last seven years. Um, I am, besides work and volunteering and IET. I am keen on reading, puzzles, problem solving, and I'm passionate about fitness, anything but running though, and general well-being. And I'm also very passionate about my Christian faith. Um, I love to learn about people, their history and cultures. And this is why I, one of, one of the biggest items on my bucket list is to travel to all 195 UN countries before my time passes. Let's see how that goes. Thank you. I'll pass you over to Sam. <laughs> everyone, thanks everyone. Uh, my name is Samuel. I'm the liaison officer for the um, London YP network. Um, just a quick um, summary about myself. Um, I grew up in a small city called Preston. We normally say it's close to Blackpool, even though it's like 45 minutes away from Blackpool. I, um, I studied um, electronic and electrical engineering at the University of Leeds, um, which I graduated in September. Um, actually I lied, July uh, 2016, before moving to London in September 2016. Um, I'm currently currently working as a telecoms engineer for a company called WSP. Um, what I do is I create um, technologies within the transportation environment. Um, so as my job for the um, London network, um, I'm involved in and responsible for reaching out to young professionals and also other institutions as well and um, other in industrial organizations as well for some collaboration, um, collaborative events. Over the last um, three years, I've probably been to more than 20 schools around the UK from primary school to university, uh, sort of encouraging um, students to get into STEM. Um, while I'm not busy in engineering in a way, um, I'm a big fan of strategy books. Um, some of my favorite authors are Malcolm Gladwell, um, Robert Greene, uh, Ray Dalio. Um, I'm, I do love reading uh, about strategy. Um, sometimes I'm also traveling around the world, um, the world as well. Last year I was actually in six different countries. Um, I'm a big Chelsea fan, by the way, so football's coming back um, next week. Hopefully we still have a chance to win the league. Thanks very much. Hi guys, I'm Ramel. 
and I'm currently the social media coordinator for the IET Young Professionals. So I've been a volunteer for about just over seven years now, and I've also helped organize several of the events that which will be spoken about throughout this webinar. So a bit about myself. So I've been passionate about electronics from a very long, young age. I started studying it, it from the age of 14, all the way up to degree level, where I graduated from Bruno University with an MN in electrical and electronic engineering. Since graduating, I've worked as an electronic design engineer, which included working for the award-winning smart ticketing company that brings many of you Londoners the Oyster Card today. So aside from working as an engineer, I like to read a lot. I also like to get carried away with my camera as well as travel around the world. And also like to keep fit. I like to keep fit by going to the gym, running, swimming, and taking on unpleasant challenges. As you can see, I've done Tough Mudder. I'm smiling, but I tell you free, it wasn't pleasant. But one of the next things I want to tick off on my list is to do a marathon. So if any of you guys got any tips where I can learn how to survive that, I'd be more than happy to know. Now I'm going to pass you over to Shaheem. Um, hey guys, my name is Shaheem Ogbe Mohammed and I'm the student liaison. This is a role I have held for the past two years. I joined the IET originally in the second year of my university degree. And um, I thought it was a nice way to interact with the engineering community and also have my own input in it. I think as a student, you feel like you have a voice in a way uh, where your future career will go. But joining an organisation like this has led me to learn new skills and interact with uh, the people that have handled a lot, you know, leaders in their field and learn a ton from them. Um, I'm currently finishing off a biomedical engineering degree at King's College. Hopefully, hopefully by God's grace, I pass my final presentation and I can finally kiss this degree goodbye. And then after that, I will pursue a doctorate in biomedical engineering, specialising in machine learning in medical applications, in particularly interventional surgery, interventional cardiac surgery. So that's kind of like my goal, but I'm done right now, so I'm going to pass you off to Jason. He's going to talk about his career. Hey everyone, uh, name's Jason. Uh, I'm the events coordinator for the multitude of events that we host for our young professionals, uh, some of which we'll talk about in the later slides. Um, I've been a volunteer for over four years now. I'm originally from the Sydney, Australia chapter of the IIT, uh, which just shows how global the IIT spans. And that's one of the big reasons why I joined the IIT. They host events all around the world where you can network and meet like-minded individuals many of whom who will help you progress along your career path, as they have done for me. Um, outside of work, uh, I love traveling, hiking and camping, sketching city skylines, uh, pretty much everything and anything to do with the outdoors. Um, let's jump right into the first, uh, first event. Um, the first event is IAT's flagship event of the year. Uh, it's called Present Around the World, and as the name suggests, it is a competition in which participants will compete against each other via a 10-minute presentation on the topic of their choice. This is in front of an audience and a panel of, of judges, followed by a five-minute question and answer session. You'll be assessed poorly on your ability to present. The competition takes place at various levels, known as heats, consisting of inter-university, local, national, regional, and international heats. The cr criteria to enter is open to anyone from the ages of 18 to 30 years old from all walks of STEM life whether you're a member of the IAT or not. The global prize money for the winner and runner-up is a thousand pounds and 500 pounds respectively, with the addition of local, national and regional prizes as well. So how does this help you smash your career goals? You'll build on your communication and presentation skills and network with industry professionals. I'll now pass you back to Lakshan, who was the 2018 winner of the competition. I'm sure he's got a lot of advice for you all who are interested. Thank you very much, Jason. Yeah, so I just wanted to quickly share my experience uh, with Present Around the World. Now, I entered PATW Present Around the World in 2018 uh, at the London heat of the competition, uh, simply to develop my communication and presenting skills. And the London Young Professional Network at the time gave me the opportunity to just do, just do that. Um, and it was actually the time where I actually discovered volunteering for the IT as well. Now, the reason why I 
wanted to develop my communication and presenting skills was because when I started my career as an engineer, it became very apparent that most of the good engineers, they had excellent communication skills. Now, you need to be able to present your solutions to people without that technical background and to ensure that your solution gets implemented through that effective communication. So that was the main reason why I entered the competition. Now, the atmosphere that's set up within Present Around the World is actually quite relaxed and it helps ease those nerves, especially for those who are uh, quite nervous in presenting in front of a large audience like I was back in the day. And this definitely helped play its part in me winning the London Heat of the competition, which you can see from the two images on your screen. Now, after winning, I progressed through the different stages and different rounds of the competition. And every time I progressed, uh, my confidence in my ability to present just kept increasing. And my nerves started to slowly disappear um, as, as each round uh, progressed. Now, in addition, through every round of the competition, I was learning what my own presenting style was. Now, and I was also learning what was working and what wasn't working when it came to present when it came to presenting. And I actually ended up progressing to the global final. And if you go into the next slide, I ended up winning the global final in, in 2018. Now, this has been the highlight of my career, or should I say the highlight of my personal development to date. And it's crazy to think that due to present around the world, presenting and communicating has become one of my strongest skill sets and it's also crazy to think that i developed the skill set in such a short amount of time through present around the world so it's something i definitely recommend everyone or anyone to actually take part in as you've got you've got absolutely nothing to lose by entering present around the world um, and with these newfound skill sets I've gained, it's doing wonders to me in my career and I'm definitely smashing my career goals. So that's present around the world. I'm now gonna hand it over to Sam, who is gonna talk a bit more about the life skills workshops that we run. Over Thank to you, Sam. Like. Thanks very much. Yeah, so as part of my um, role, um, I'm responsible for engaging with um, young professionals. Um, one of the issues I always get young professionals discussing with me is the fact that they feel like life after university is not some, it's some, it's not some the same as what they picture it is, as. A recent um, research actually done showed that um, seven out of 10 young professionals um, sort of had to re reassess the, the career life paths and the life choices at a, uh, in the mid twenties, which is quite really surprising. Um, one of some of the issues the younger professionals um, came out with was um, actually finding the right mentor, uh, moving into a leadership role after starting the work, um, learning how to manage a team. As we know, this is one of the most important things to do. Also, knowing your worth and um, standing by your salary. As we all know, uh, money is quite an important thing, uh, and I'm hoping you save some of that money from the presenting around the world lack. Um, so how does the IAT plan on helping you to um, smash your goal? We're planning on creating some of the, um, some important um, life key workshop events, um, which you'll find helpful. Um, the first event we're looking into creating is um, um, career strategy. So obviously looking into um, when is the right time to switch sect 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 um, sectors or roles, um, self-branding. So using um, social networks such as LinkedIn, attending um, industrial conferences, and also to um, stand out and gain opportunities as as we know already, there's been news all over the all over the world about redundancy because of the COVID-19. Um, another event we plan on bringing to you is um, career progression. Now, I've been to a lot of conferences, and the one, the three eyes that's always ringing off is um, inclusion, influence, and impact. So when we look at inclusion, we're looking at how to get into the door. So you know, learning the technical skills. We'll be looking into influence, which is actually getting a seat on the table and building relationship within a working environment. And we'll also be looking at impact, which is always obviously having a vision and learning how to execute your vision. The third event we'll be bringing to you will be effective communication. Now, everyone thinks communication is easy, but it's not actually as easy. Every time I do a presentation such as this one, I get nervous before the five, do it before the five, 10 minutes. And then when I start speaking, I just get in the flow, such as um, the same as um, Lack said earlier. So we'll be looking into events um, to help you with um, structuring your, when communicating, um, which obviously helps you deliver where, deliver your message effectively. We'll be lo looking at um, 
replacing filter with pauses. So basically awkward breaks, which makes, doesn't make your communication um, skills uh, fluent. We'll also be looking at um, concise and uh, concise, clear and confident. So basically understanding how to um, get straight to the point. So we'll be bringing you different um, young leaders in the industry uh, who are going to be helping you, helping us, so I say, um, to uh, achieve this, um, this or the skills. Um, this might not be this year because of the COVID-19 um, situation going on. So it's definitely an event to look forward to, if not the end of this year, but definitely next year. On to Luchi. Thanks, Sam. Next no, it, no it, it's me. It's me, not Luchi. Okay. Luchi's next. No. <laughs> <laughs> so... Um, so on to the technical talks and the engineering challenge. So we love, we all love attending uh, technical talks and the IET are known for their range of technical talks that they run throughout the year. However, did you know that some of the technical talks are actually organized and run by the London Young Professionals Network? That's something we do as well. Now, how can attending these technical talks, how can it help smash your career goals? Well, you can either learn something new on a uh, something new if the topic of the talk is outside of your engineering discipline or outside of your industry sector that you work in. And you might actually end up finding a passion for this if you do attend them. Uh, or if the topic of the talk is within your engineering discipline or within the sector, your industry sector, then you can broaden your knowledge on it. So. Uh, if you're going for your professional registration and you're applying for your CEng, for example, or your IEng, your Chartership or Incorporate Engineer uh, professional registration, one of the competencies that you would actually need to demonstrate is uh, broadening or deepening your, uh, your understanding of your discipline or your subject. So if you're attending any of the IET technical talks, um, this would actually be the perfect um, uh, evidence to actually demonstrate that you've met this competency, especially through the CPD hours or the continuous professional development hours you collect. And there's something we're working on is um, with any of our technical talks, we're aiming to hand out certificates, CPD certificates, which you could collect and actually show uh, during your assessments, you can actually show them as evidence uh, when it comes to applying for your professional registration. Um, in addition, you can also build new contacts through networking before or after the technical talk, which is, um, which is actually the case for all of our networks, uh, sorry, which is the case for all of our uh, events that we run as the London Young Professionals Network. And you never know, you might end up uh, networking with an individual who uh, could possibly open doors for you to an industry sector uh, that you've always wanted to get into. So there's always that opportunity as well. Now, there's one thing we like to do with our events, and that is to actually have some fun. So what we do is we run an annual engineering challenge. And during the engineering challenge, we invite industry experts to deliver a technical talk. And at the end of the talk, we ch we, uh, there's a challenge associated with the topic of the talk. I'm going to give you an example. If we go to the next slide. A few years ago, we invited a... Um, a speaker to deliver a talk on the construction of the shard and the technologies used in the construction of the shard. And after the talk, we asked those who attended to construct a tall building using um, uncooked spaghetti and marshmallows. And uh, the team who basically constructed the tallest building, they basically won some prizes. Um, so uh, another example, if we go on to the next slide, during this engineering challenge, we had a technical talk and after the talk, we asked those who attended the talk to construct a catapult device with um, some materials that we provided them. And uh, whichever team constructed the device that could throw a paper ball uh, the furthest, they basically won some prizes. So it's something very different to the traditional technical talks that you may have attended um, previously. Um, you know, we just like to have a bit of fun with our, with our events. Uh, and then if we go into the next slide, it's, I would say some people might find this the most important part of a technical talk is the networking and the free refreshments that we provide with it. So while you're networking, at the same time, you'll be munching on some 
really, really tasty IET refreshments. Um, so I don't know about you, but to me, that sounds like a win-win scenario. So that's our technical talks and our engineering challenge. Um, we're going to move on to our next event, which is now Aluchi, who's going to talk about the routes to registration. Over to you, Aluchi. Finally, thank you. So um, I'm going to, well, like you said, routes to registration. Um, this event is tailored to help you smash the career goal of getting professionally registered with the IET. For those that don't know, getting professional reg professionally registered is very beneficial because it increases your earning potential. Statistics show that people who have gotten professionally registered can get up to 18% salary increase following the attainment of a registration. It also gives you greater influence within your, industry, your organization and it, gives, it is an international, internationally recognized qualification show because it shows your competence and commitment to the field. Next slide, please. So this workshop, how the workshop works is that you are um, you, you, you book a 30 minute slot with a professional reg registration advisor. So it's a one on one um, engagement. So you grab tea, coffee, biscuits, and you sit down and you talk through the process of getting registered. If you have specific needs that you, that you, you if you've started the process and you have specific needs or specific questions you want to ask, you can ask them about it. If you are just curious about the process, you can find out about how, it, um, how to become chartered or become an incorporate, incorporated engineer, or to become a, an ICT technician or an engineering technician. These are the four categories that the IET awards to people. Next slide, please. So um, anyone can attend this workshop, you, whether you are an IET member or not. If you, are, if you don't know, if you're just curious about getting professionally registered, you're welcome to attend. Or if you have started the process and you just, you're stuck somewhere, it's also a very beneficial workshop. I have attended it myself and it's really helped me in the process. I haven't finished yet, but it was, it's one of the things that has put me through. And also you, you get follow-up calls or follow-up engagement with the PRAs because they contact you because they have your contact once you've gone for, the, gone for the event. So they check in with you from time to time to see how, um, to see how you're getting on with the, with the process. So it's a good workshop and I encourage you to look into it. There's a lot of information about professional registration on the IIT website. So next time we have the event, please sign up and you will not regret it. Thank you. At the IIT, we have a high importance in nurturing the next generation of engineers. And the best way to do that is to engage with students. Um, so that's from, you know, providing mentors or even just some workshops. Next slide, please. So during my time at King's College London, I was the vice president of the Engineering Society. I was very keen on collaborating with many different organizations and companies. However, I felt like there was not many companies looking to involve themselves with, you know, engineering societies or universities. So while I'm at IET, I'm very keen into interacting with any engineering student society there is, whether it's at university or even at sixth forms or even independent bodies, any way to engage with engineering students. So one, one of the things we can do is provide industry speakers, so people from the panel or our connections who can come in and give a talk about how, you know, they, prog they progress through their career or even how they got in their career and tips on how to do it if you want to do the same thing. Another way we can um, help you in an organisation is by doing workshops, so CV workshops, cover letters, or even maybe just a little kind of technical workshop, like maybe a quick Python course so that I can provide with the machine learning by doing a lot of modules within my degree. And we can also sponsor some events. Say you have a social event, we can provide a food, of course, if you guys shout us out and promote our events. As well as this, we have a large amount of bursaries which the IT provide. We can help get you guys onto those by helping out application and even sharing what bursaries are on offer. And that's all from me. Thank you. Thank you, Shaheen. Um, I'm going to talk to you about the um, Women in Engineering evening that we organize uh, every year. 
Um, as for me, I joined the um, IET when I enrolled in a PRINCE2 course. It's just to say that um, uh, the IET will help you um, uh, develop your career, um, whatever uh, the stage um, you are in your career. So focusing on the women in engineering um, evening, uh, you can see uh, some of the stats here about um, the um, presence of women in the industry. I'll let you have a, a look. So basically, there's a shortage of women in engineering. Many UK industries and TfL want to attract more women in a, and a diverse workforce. We promote STEM education and we want to inform women and men about the careers available in engineering. We invite women engineers to tell inspiring stories about their career and take part in a Q&A with the participants. This is a very popular event organized by the Young Professionals Network. It can create vocations and there are good networking opportunities after the talk, so it's highly um, recommended. Last October, we invited Dr. Michelle Dix, Managing Director of Crossrail 2 and previously Director of Planning for TfL. During the talk, Michelle explained that she had never thought of a career in engineering up until university, but she said she came across great career advisors and followed their advice. Most importantly, she explained how she achieved work-life balance to keep enjoying her work and her home. If you've missed the event, you can catch up and watch the recording on the IET TV website. I'm going to post the link um, on, on the chat. The next person. Hi guys. So I'm just going to quickly talk about the current social media channels we're on as well as content we intend to put out. So currently we're on the major social media platforms as you can see we are on Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn and Facebook. On Facebook we have a Facebook page as well as a Facebook group. Now as well as just putting out information of our latest up and coming events we want to be able to engage with you guys and to be able to make it a two-way street where you're also able to engage with other young professionals. So we also intend to put out some career hacks that you know may be valuable to you guys. So as I can see in the comments, a lot of you, a lot of the young professionals, including myself, want to become chartered, for example. However, there's a lot of ambiguity regarding the subject as well as some myths. So we like to put out some information, for example, chartership myths. Um, I know, for example, some of you may be starting out in your career and may not know how to um, interview. So we put out some tips for that, as well as networking tips, as Whenever you come to our events, we also have network, uh, networking opportunities and it's always good to be able to be confident with networking and meeting people and making connections. And just as Shaheen also said, we also do offer financial support, which are bursaries and scholarships. Now there are different deadlines throughout the year, so we want to ensure that you guys don't miss out on that. So make sure you do follow on the different platforms. We also intend to collaborate with other institutes as well as industry experts and do some live streams regarding this. So make sure you follow all our platforms and be on the lookout for all our competitions and prizes as, you know, who doesn't like free stuff? Now I'm going to pass you over to Lakshan where he's going to be talking more about how we can support you. Thank you very much, Romel. Thank you. Um, so we're uh, at the, we're, we're approaching the, the, uh, the end of our webinar. Um, but this is where we would like um, to hear from you. Now, are there any events which you may think might benefit you in the future or that might help you smash your career goals that we haven't actually spoken about in today's webinar? So if there are, please um, write those uh, ideas in the chat uh, within the webinar and we'll take them on board. We'll take them away and we'll see how we can um, create an event out of this, provided there's a, a huge demand for them as well. Um, so just a, a few examples, do you want to see more technical talks um, that um, uh, are focused in a particular engineering discipline or an engineering sector? Do you want to see more um, events that target a particular soft skill or do you want to see more events 
targeted towards um, professional registration. If that, if or any others, please write them in the chat, and we'll take them away. Um, and yeah, no, that that's it really. And we're gonna close the webinar. Um, sorry, no. Before we close the webinar, I'm gonna hand you over to Minel, who will talk us through uh, a mini recruitment campaign that we will that we are going to be running to get more uh, volunteers on board the London Young Professionals Network. And once Minil has ended, we'll uh, take on any questions uh, you might have for us. So over to you, Minil. Thank you, Lakshan. Um, so as, you can, as you've seen this before, this is the structure of our current committee. Um, we are the future generation and we're already making quite a big change as it is and there's more changes to come and the direction of our future depends on us as a team and as a network. We are looking for more individuals to join us and to support us with the work that we are currently doing and also we have a new number of events that are coming up in the following year so we're looking for support for these events and even any ideas of what we can do to to help you um, in your career progression or anything that you're interested in do direct it forward to us and um, our emails will come in the following slide or you can put it in the chat so being part of the committee we've had many benefits um, one being is the network as you can see, and you've, you've met everyone here at the moment in the London Committee, we're all from a diverse range of backgrounds and at different points in our career. Um, and I've actually got advice from some of these guys in, in my own career, which has helped me. So we're here to support each other. We've been able to have the opportunity to go to the Leicester Space Centre, uh, all expense paid trip, which was provided to us by the IET um, for the Present Around the World competition as well. And we were able to represent the committee at this event and join them. We also got to have dinner with the president of the IET as well. Um, this allowed us to meet more esteemed individuals who are quite high up in their field. So you can break these barriers, which you're, you're not usually able to um, as being part of the committee and meeting people who are maybe really senior in their uh, companies as well. Um, so next year, we also have the IET 150th anniversary, which is um, we've got a few events planned already for that year. And one of them will be a startup showcase um, for uh, uh, your businesses, which are involved in providing an environmental, uh, environmental environmentally sustainable solutions for the future. Um, so if you're in that field where you have a startup, which is got an, a solution for the environment or working towards that in technology and engineering please do give us a shout um so you might be able to showcase your startup at the opportunity as well um, and there are many more technical talks to follow up um as well so please do stay tuned and, and now for any questions and you can also find all of our iet volunteer emails so please do get in contact if you have any ideas or you'd want to um, provide us any feedback as well about today's webinar. Great stuff. Thank you very much, Minil. So yeah, as, as Minil um, mentioned, we have all of our uh, emails on the screen now. Um, now, previously I did mention if there are any future events that you would like to see us run, um, but you have only thought about these events, you know, after the webinar's over, feel free to drop us an email, uh, any one of us an email or follow us on our social media platforms and drop us a direct message on this. Or if you've got any other questions relating towards the, um, the London Young Professionals Network, feel free to drop us an email or direct message us on them. Um, uh, dark message us on our social media platforms. Now I'm going to read a few questions, um, see what the chat is saying regarding Q&As. Q um, just bear with me. So we have got... Uh, so is there any network in the north? I'm, I'm sure there is um, a local network in the north. Um, if you do go onto the IET website, um, you'll be able to find a list of local networks within your area. Um, Lucia, I, can, I can drop the link in here. 
Yeah, okay. that'll be brilliant. Yeah, Thank you, Alucci. Yeah. Yeah. So when Alucci drops the link, you'll be able to see the different local networks, uh, IET local networks, and you can um, see who the closest uh, local network is. Um, general question regarding CPD. CPD could be uh, could be awarded for activities like reading books and so forth. How would you know how many CPDs the book would have been worth? For example, I'm reading a book, The Certified Reliability Engineer. How would I record the CPD value for that in my CPD activity as I'm not sure of how to quantify reading the book in terms of CPD hours? So what I tend to do is if I have read an article, I mean, I'm, I, I'm not a book reader um, myself, but if I've read a, an article, let's take, for example, the engineering technology magazine that, that gets handed out. Um, I usually put in two hours just for reading a book. It, I'd say it wouldn't have to be, um, the, it wouldn't have to be really, really accurate. If you just give a rough ballpark of the figure, I think that should suffice. Um, what about the other committee members? Um, have you guys got any uh, tips regarding that? Um, mm -hmm. Regarding CPD, um, I basically, for, I, I remember- but for, for reading a book. For, for reading, reading a book. Or reading the yeah, book. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't, in my opinion, it really should not be, you know, yeah, you can give a ballpark figure. Exactly. So I use, yeah. yeah, I use how many hours did I use to do this course or how many hours did I use to read this book? And I put that in as my CPD. Yeah. yeah. Same as what you said. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Okay. That's right. It's always, it's always good to have a varied amount of C CPDs. So you wouldn't just have reading books. You'll be doing attending events and you'll have all these others that contribute to your CPDs. So it's not That's too important. Yeah. They won't concentrate on one or the other. It's having yeah. that varied very amount of CPUs, yeah. Yeah. And one thing to just to add on Jason's um, thoughts as well um, is take advantage of the online webinars that's around these days, because we can't actually attend um, most events um, physically. It's uh, probably worth you know just attending webinars. Um, I think that would probably be a good idea to the end of the year. Right. Make stuff. sure make sure you keep a log of them. That's always a good mm. tip to to keep a log of them somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Another question is, um, how do we join the Young Professionals Network? And I love the question because um, it's, it's definitely always a good thing to volunteer. And that is, is a great way to get in contact with the industry. That's actually how I found uh, my, my job that I'm currently working in. And uh, yeah, contact uh, Manal, Manal Patel. Emails are up on the screen now and she'll, get you, she'll help you get, get involved with the team. Uh, another question is, uh, is the registration workshops free? So all of our, um, all of our events that we've described in this webinar, they're all free to attend. Um, so just keep a lookout on the IET events page for, for these events, or as, as we mentioned earlier, follow us on our social media platforms um, to be one of the first to register to attend um, our amazing free events. <laughs> Uh, I think on top of that as well, um, it's also good to know that there are, there are so much other events that the IIT holds um, outside of the young professional group. Um, and and they're, all, they're all quite valuable as well in terms of um, networking and, and getting, getting your, your voice out there, getting your face out there. Um, I think that answers one of the, one of the other questions that was about you know how can international students penetrate the the current job market for example it's always tough for for a student and i, I felt i felt the same way and it, it purely was through mark uh, through networking and if you can get yourself out there um you know talking to people and and um you know sounding like you're very interested in in the topics that that were discussed um you, you never know who you might meet so Nice one. Cheers, Jason. Um, another question. I usually attend the tech talk events, the technical talk events, uh, but, not, but not always able to network with new young professionals. I'm not good at icebreakers. How can I identify young professionals 
after this event. So as what Samuel uh, mentioned, one of the events that we're looking to run is, um, uh, you know, how to, in, you know, how to network effectively, how to um, icebreakers, for example. Um, so that's uh, an event which I strongly recommend you to uh, uh, attend in the future. Uh, and in terms of how can you identify young professionals after this event? So young professionals are usually between the age of 18 to 35. So in my opinion, if, if, if this was me, if I saw someone in, who looked between the age of 18 to 35, <laughs> I'd, I'd consider them to be a young professional. Um, so that's that really. But in terms of yeah, also... identifying us, <laughs> um, <laughs> um, we we do have representatives um, at these talks. So it'll be one of us in, in the committee. So the last talk that I attended was on digital twinning. It was a Turing talk. Um, myself and LED were present. So um, we will have representatives of committee uh, as, as, at as many events as we can make that mm -hmm. are not necessarily only young professional events, but also the technical talks as well. So do look out for any of our faces. And this is a sort of introduction to sort of get you to, to know who we are really as well. So you can spot us when we're at these future talks and events post COVID. Nice one. Thank you, Minnow. And we've, there, there are quite a few suggestions and ideas for events in the future, so we will be taking note of those um, and trying our best to run events to, to target those, to target those, um, those ideas. Um, it will be really interesting to hear real-life experiences of engineers who have taken the skills they have learned at uni or otherwise uh, uni or otherwise and started to move up the ladder at work also engineering entrepreneurs working towards a social good and that's definitely something which we have um, discussed within the committee to actually uh, run the future so keep your eyes peeled out uh, peeled for for events um, tailoring that mm. Minna, were you going to say something there yeah so in terms of entrepreneurship um we we would we're so as I mentioned before, we have that startup showcase event that we're doing to give young professionals a platform um, for their, their new startups that have engineering sustainable solutions. So we have that, but we'll also try to incorporate a bit more of how to develop your entrepreneurship skills here and there as well, um, which I could um, help and do. Uh, being co-founder, um, we have another question which Sam's going to answer live um any tips on how to track activities for competencies um all right i'll share this quickly um just to tell you a bit about myself so i graduated in 2016 i uh, been working for three years i submitted my chartership application last year after three years and i was chartered um, in january this year just at the age of 25 so just to let everyone know the myths about you need to be 40 to be chartered it's not true you know it's possible if you really go through the experience, I would say. So I had a personal Excel, Excel tracker where I had, the, um, C, I had a, a, a line for CPDs for my project, um, how long it went up for. Um, if anyone wants this, it's something I could um, potentially share with people just to you know, track, track the competencies. So if you could send me an email, um, Samuel, um, I will be sure to pass this on. It shouldn't be a problem. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to send you one, Samuel. <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave you, I'll leave, okay. yeah. I'll leave you I'll want to say to, something as well. <laughs> another thing, you can use the, the career manager. So the career manager yeah, is also yeah. very good for you to, so that one is, I mean, is, is IT. So you can just yeah. log in and put in the evidence directly there. But definitely the Excel, that's what I started with because mm. to be fair, career manager is a bit cumbersome. So that's why the workshop helps to yeah. help you put through the career manager and how to use it. Definitely. So, yeah. Yeah, it's a great it's a great question because that's one of the toughest things to to do to track activities and and you know keep, keep, keep at it yeah yeah and, and yeah. keep at it and, and I can I can see I loved how everyone so a lot of people answered so, sort of where they're from and and sort of what they're up to now and, and a lot of you guys and, and girls are are moving towards your I eng and C eng um, so I think you know in the future we'll we'll help you we'll concentrate on that and we'll help you build towards that. Yeah. Great. 
So you guys can uh, reach out to us um, on LinkedIn. We have a, a page there so we can uh, continue the conversation. I'm sure that there's a lot of questions that you haven't been able to ask. So feel free to continue to do that um, offline on LinkedIn, we're on Instagram as well, and all the um, other platforms. Great stuff. Thank you very much, Elodie. And there hasn't there doesn't seem to be any more uh, questions that have come through for a while now. Um, so I'd just like to say thank you very much for those who have attended. Um, like we've been, re we're going to reiterate it one more time. Drop us an email if you've got any questions, or follow us on our social media to keep up to date with all the events um, that are coming your way. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Have a great day. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thank you, guys. Bye.